Okay, so um, you might remember from previous experiments this stuff. This is a lump of um, natural graphite sent to me by RS International, and, and it's pretty good stuff, and I've been using it for various experiments, and I obviously got a good old chunky lump. Now, as well as sending me that, they also sent me um, a small bit of this. Now, that, that is graphite as well, and they call it VOC graphite, and actually I think that's wrong. Um, there are a lot of uh, strange impurities in this, and I don't know what impurities they are, but it would certainly be well worth testing, because it's really changed um, the nature of this graphite. It's made it actually even more metallic than graphite normally is, and it, and it peels a bit like a foil, in fact. Um, so I'd love to know what's in there, so I must get it sent off for analysis. But... Um, those impurities, those inclusions, are having some really weird effect to the actual natural graphite. Um, one of the effects it's having is um, the diamagnetism. Now, all graphite is diamagnetic, and what that means is that if you put it in uh, a magnetic field, it sets up an equal and opposing magnetic field within the graphite, so you get a repulsive effect. Uh, and you can see this um, on the internet, lots and lots of experiments, and Geim was doing it with um, frogs because um, many materials are diamagnetic to a degree, and the um, diamagnetism is in relation to the field strength that you pump into them. So if you have a very high Tesla field strength and you drop a frog in there, then the diamagnetism of the water will levitate the frog. Uh, and it's the same with graphite. The up the magnetic field, you will up the amount of levitation. But natural graphite has actually a very, very poor um, diamagnetic effect. It's extremely difficult to see it. It's like half a millimetre or something like that, the levitation you'll get, if at all. And then you have to make the, um, the graphite extremely thin so there's no weight, so that the weight won't actually press it down. So the diamagnetic response of natural graphite is extremely poor. But um, the diamagnetic response of this VOC graphite that um, the Sri Lankan company sent me is absolutely astounding, really. Um, what I've got here is a small flake in a test tube. Now, I've um, only got a small flake because I have a small sample, and I like to do um, big experiments with lots of chunky bits, but I only have a small piece, so I'm, I'm having to do lots of tiny experiments. Now, I put the small flake in the glass test tube only to restrain the graphite. It's to stop it flying off. And what I equally have is a... I think it's an N38, I think, neobidium magnet there on a, on a bit of steel rod. And it's only on a bit of steel rod, so I can waggle it around a bit. Now, if I put the magnet into the test tube and just give that a little flick, then the graphite, there we go, is now being diamagnetically levitated on that neomagnet. Now, you can't really see that very well, so I've got a close-up for you, and I'll show you the close-up later. Having done that, it occurred to me that um, if the thing is graphite, and it is um, magnetically levitating, then um, the diamagnetism would also be um, susceptible to um, heat and light. So I'm, I have this, which is just a, a lens from uh, one of those helping hands electricians, um, piece of equipment. I took the lens out and I've been using it to focus the sun. And I was focusing the sun on a slither of the graphite on this structure. Now uh, this is just a block of steel uh, and it's just acting as a keeper and what we have here is four neomagnets in a north-south-north-south arrangement uh, and that creates a magnetic field that I can stably levitate a piece of the um, VOC graphite on. So if I pop my bit of VOC graphite on, it's quite difficult to do because it wants to shoot off. Pop it on, then that VOC graphite is being levitated on there. And if I gently move that, you can see it swimming around a little bit, I hope. But it's being levitated on there anyway. And then what I did was um, use the sunlight to focus on that, and I was able to move that around that bed using the power of the sunlight. And I've got another um, video later to show you that. Now, given that we have this natural diamagnetic um, graphite with, with uh, high diamagnetism, then what we should be able to do is construct a circle out of it. And then if we focus light on that circle, and that circle is on um, a magnetic bed like that, it should spin. And that's what we're aiming for here. 
Now, the magnetic bed needs to be a, a ring of south and a centred north in there, so that we have a north bed and a ring south to create a stable magnetic field for it to spin on. So once you have that arrangement, you pop your uh, piece of diamagnetic uh, graphite on top of it, shine on some light, it'll spin. And I have uh, a little video to show you that as well. Anyway, I found that absolutely amazing. And um, I think, and in fact I'm pretty sure, that this mine in Sri Lanka, this, this RS International Sri Lankan company, is about the only place in the world, sorry about that, but the only place in the world you can get this stuff. Now this stuff seems to have the uh, same diamagnetic properties as HOPG, highly ordered pyrolytic graphite. And highly ordered pyrolytic graphite is insanely expensive. Um, but if you're going to want some of this, I suggest you write to the company pretty quickly, because once this gets out, uh, this, the price of this is going to shoot up. Um, the, the uses of this uh, are going to be, um, well, thousandfold. I mean, one thing you could do is just pop it on the bottom of a maglev train. And if you do that and put that maglev train on a magnetic field, then you're going to be able to move a train with it. And um, that's going to be such a demand. But a fascinating natural material that really ought to be investigated far more than it is. Uh, and as I say, I think they're calling it VOC graphite. I like to think of it as um, high-powered natural diamagnetic graphite. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. Okay. There it is. Holding it off by its diamagnetism. And here's a bit of it being shot in free space. Just so you can see that it wasn't the glass holding it up. But actually that level of diamagnetism is pretty impressive. So you have to watch quite carefully here. But... As I use that lens and move the dot of light around the surface of the graphite, you should be able to see that graphite being moved, there you go, by the sunlight. So I'm using sunlight to move that graphite across the surface of those magnets. Now, those magnets are in an orientation of north, south, north, south, and the Natural graphite is just floating on the top of it, as you can see, because of the oh, excess diamagnetism of this particular bit of graphite. Put that back on. There we go. And I'm using a lens here, and I'm focusing the sunlight on it with that lens, and when I get the sunlight focused on it, I'm able to use the light to move the graphite around on that uh, magnetic structure. Now that's absolutely fascinating because this is just a, a little fleck of graphite I peeled off and have rubbed it down. What I need really is a bigger bit, so I can get a nice perfect circular piece of graphite. And um, what I also need is an arrangement of magnets where I have a north pole in the centre surrounded completely by a south pole.